Professional wrestling began in the late 19th century, but it took off in the 20th century. Before there was a Harlem Heat, The Rock, Mark Henry, and Kofi Kingston to name a few, there was one man who had America in his hands. Today's story is about none other than the biggest and greatest black wrestler of the 80s, the Junkyard Dog. With that being said, let's cue that intro. Born Sylvester Riddler on December 13, 1952 in Rainsboro, North Carolina. Now Sylvester, he was an athletic kid as he would play football. In high school, this is where Sylvester game began to grow on the field. He would receive a scholarship to HBCU and Fayetteville State University. Here is where Sylvester became a two-time honorable mission All-American and he would graduate with a bachelor's degree in political science. Now Sylvester, he would spend a short stint in the NFL with the Green Bay Packers, but due to back and knee injuries, his football career would end. Now, just like many other ex-NFL players like Roman Reigns, Goldberg, Brian Pillman, and the big cat Ernie Ladd to name a few, Sylvester, he would turn to professional wrestling. Sylvester would make his wrestling debut under the name Leroy Rochester in 1976 under the Tennessee Territory working for Jerry Jarrett. During this time of wrestling, everything was separated by territories. This means you can only work for one territory at a time. You would travel town to town wrestling the best wrestlers that they could provide. He would then move on to Nick Gulak's promotion, NWA Made America. Here, he would capture the NWA Made America Tag Team Wrestling titles with Gypsy Joe. Sylvester would move to Stu Hard Stampede Wrestling in Canada working under the name Big Daddy Riddler. Here is where he would capture the North American Heavyweight title twice. First, he would capture it from Alo Leilani on December 1st, 1978, which he held for 126 days. Then, he would lose the title to the future Jake the Snake Roberts. But, he would end up regaining the title on July 27th, 1979 in the ladder match. In 1980, Sylvester would move to Men's South Wrestling where Booker Cowboy Bill Watts gave him the gimmick that we all know to this day. To this day! The Junkyard Dog. Now, originally when the Junkyard Dog came to the ring, he would bring a shopping cart filled with junk. This shopping cart was called the Junk Wagon. Now, he started off as a jobber in his early career. Now, a jobber is someone who is set to lose to make their opponent look strong. Eventually his gimmick would get over with the crowd and getting over means that he became a fan favorite Now the fans began to love the junkyard dog and as his popularity grew some say he was more popular than Ric Flair The junkyard dog will have one of his most memorable feuds with the fabulous Freebirds. This is where they have blinded him with hair cream They will play this injury into real life since he was blinded by the Freebirds he was unable to see the birth of his daughter. This would cause legitimate heat as the fans would get into the ring and one friend would actually point a gun and try to shoot one of the free birds. Junkyard Dog had other feuds in Mid-South Wrestling with Ernie Ladd, Ted DiBiase, Kamala, and King Kong Bondi to name a few. His best feud was against Ted DiBiase who was friends but Ted turned on the Junkyard Dog. They would have a match where the loser would leave town. The Junkyard Dog, he would lose this, and this led into a 1982 cross promotion match for the NWA and AWA. It was set up Junkyard Dog against Nick Brockwrinkle on October 2nd, 1982. The Junkyard Dog will win via pinfall. So far, Sylvester's career, he is a two time Stampede North American Heavyweight Champion, a NWA Made America Tag Team Champion a three-time Mid-South Wrestling Louisiana Champion, a eight-time Mid-South Tag Team Champion, and a four-time Mid-South North American Heavyweight Champion. Sylvester, he was Mid-South's biggest wrestler, so it was no question when WWE, then was called the WWF, came calling. He would make his debut on Georgia Championship Wrestling taping versus Max Blue. Now, when a junkyard dog would win a match, 
he made it a habit to bring in a member from the crowd into the ring to celebrate his victory. Sylvester, he will face racism throughout his whole career. Now, for an example, it wasn't his idea to wear the chains that he had. It was the creator, Bill Watts. This will resemble a runaway slave, and he also portrayed animals at times. Former WWE commentator Jesse the Body Ventura would describe his victory dance as a lot of shucking and driving, and he also said his speech sounded like he had a mouthful of grits. The Junkyard Dog will become a dominant mid-card act for the WWF. He was one of the biggest stars, and at one point the Junkyard Dog could have given Hulk Hogan a run for his money. Yeah, I said it. At the very first WrestleMania, the Junkyard Dog, he would face Greg Valentine for the Intercontinental Championship. The Junkyard Dog, he would win by countout, but he didn't receive the title. Now, the Junkyard Dog, he never won any titles in the WWF. Although I believe he should have been the first WWF World Black Champion, with his popularity being an all-time high, plus being one point bigger than Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair. If there was a time to make a black man champion, now was the time. Some of the Junkyard Dog feuds in the WWF will consist of Greg Valentine, King Harley Race, and the Funk Brothers, to name a few. Now, in this era of wrestling, substance abuse was at an all-time high. From movie stars to musical icons, everyone did it. But the Junkyard Dog, he made this a habit, along with a lot of drinking. His lifestyle began to take a toll on him as he began missing shows. And he had stopped working out, which caused a lot of weight gain. This had destroyed his amazing physique that he had, which led to him getting released from the WWF. Now, the Iron Sheik, he would say that the Junkyard Dog was the one who introduced him to. With Sylvester, substance problems began to grow. He would begin becoming lazy in the ring. And at this time, in NWA, which would become WCW, his time there was disappointing as his star power was gone. And in 1994, the Junkyard Dog would wrestle on the independent scene. Now Sylvester, he was married twice. His first marriage would have some drama as his ex-wife would spend some time into a mental hospital after she kidnapped their daughter. This will lead to Sylvester going on a rampage looking for his daughter. He would bust into his ex-brother-in-law house who was a cop and his brother-in-law would end up receiving a bullet by accident. His second marriage would take everything from him. With him going through two divorces and having an alcohol and drug problem, Sylvester, he would face real financial problems. Sylvester, he would work odd jobs and he still wrestled on the independent scene. June 1st, 1998, Sylvester, he was making his way to Waynesboro, North Carolina for his daughter's high school graduation. But when he arrived, he found out he was too late. The next day, June 2nd, 1998, Sylvester would make his way back for a show where he would get into a single car accident that resulted in his car being flipped over three times. He was 45 years old. Sylvester was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2004, and he was also inducted into the Professional Wrestling Hall of Fame in 2012. The Junkyard Dog should be remembered for his greatness inside the ring. The Junkyard Dog is one of the stars that paved the way for it to be okay to have a black world champion. And as for every promotion Junkyard Dog stepped into, he won that main title except any title from the WWF. Why? Simply because America wasn't ready for a black champion to be broadcast on weekly television. Thanks to all my subscribers for watching and those that's not a subscriber, thank you as well. If you like what you see, and would like to see more, check out a few more videos. And until then, I'll see you on the next one. Peace.